It's Tuesday <laughs> night. Oh yeah, it's Tuesday night. Yeah. Stay okay. For freedom Live. Just about ready. It's taking his time. Here we go. Hey, you're live, guys. We're live. Ben Edel from Free Oregon. I'm David Darnell from Restore Oregon Now. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to another episode of What the Hell is Wrong with Oregon? <laughs> uh, I, I think we know the answer to that question. Uh, the answer seems to be government overreach. Can you say government overreach with us tonight? Come on, kids, say government overreach. overreach. Government yes. overreach. That's when the government overreaches its constitutional boundaries and it starts controlling our lives illegally. That's called government overreach. We seem to be very, very, very far over that constitutional line now, Ben. Yeah, we were just talking about that before we went live. I, I asked a very pointed question to Dave Darnell, which I am not going to repeat on Facebook Live because we'll just be... <laughs> Uh, but he said, you know, <laughs> by that standard, we would have started, you know, doing what I suggested or thought is it time yet uh, back in 1913. We are yeah. so far past what the what the patriots in 1776 endured uh, before they took their country back. We are way past that at this point. When Kate Brown comes out and says, OK, everybody, kids, we're going to have to wear masks outside, even though all the science says that you cannot spread COVID-19 outside, that masks don't even stop COVID-19 from, from spreading. It even says it on most of the boxes, which are made in China. And most of us in Oregon even got the poke. So what are we worried about here? You know, it's absolute political theater garbage. They just want to see how much we will take. But I'll tell you what, if we can keep taking this from Cape Brown in the state of Oregon, we're going to end up like Australia. You guys ready for that? Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, that's exactly where we're going to end up. The only thing that stands between us and them uh, or between us and looking like Australia is Australia thought it, uh, thought well of giving up their arms uh, some years ago. Uh, so, you know, if you ever wanted, you know, if you ever think, you know, if you ever get an offer from the government to buy back a gun like you bought it from the government in the first place, uh, or to turn into our, your arms, uh, you know, to make the world a safer place, just look at Australia. Uh, I don't know, you know, I haven't been following the news out of there, but every once in a while I catch something, uh, I catch a live stream of uh, cops beating people who are protesting. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's the way it is. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, so it's not working out really good. So the uh, newest, the newest uh, mandate that we got, the newest edict uh, from Nanny, uh, Nanny State Brown, uh, you know, from government gyra, I call them, the you know, God provider uh, is that uh, uh, we have to wear masks outside. Now, here's the issue with this. <clears throat> I, I, be, long before COVID, I pulled into uh, some place off of Highway 22 uh, on my way to Detroit Lake or maybe Bend or something. But it was a state. It was a state piece of property. And on that property was a sign uh, that read, no tobacco use. And down at the bottom, oh. it said, by executive order of Kate Brown. Uh, and, and as I understood it, I had, I had, just, I had previously, uh, <laughs> previously dealt with this particular uh, situation, not the, the particular sign, but as I understood uh, executive orders, um, that executive orders issued by the governor only apply to those people who work for the governor. Now, I don't get a paycheck from the governor. You don't get a paycheck from the governor. No, we pay the Most, governor's salary. We, we pay the governor's salary. <laughs> it's a uh, deal. Yeah, yeah. And so how in the hell does a governor think that she can mandate by executive order the general public who are not in her employ to do absolutely anything, much less wear masks outside. By you know, here's the question. This is the question that you ask, and this is the question that should be asked when uh, when authority, uh, when government, when authority moves from just governance, which is what you elect them to do, to authoritarianism. The question you need to ask is by what authority? 
can you do this? And so my question is, by what authority can the state, uh, can the governor of the state of Oregon issue an edict that people must wear masks outside? I don't have that answer. That's a great oh, question really? because she's the governor, because she can live, she has perpetual uh, emergency order uh, powers. Like what, what the, the reality is, is that when we decide to say, who's Kate Brown anyways, who's a governor anyways? And, and, and we just ask that question and we think, you know what, I'm not gonna do what she says because she says it anymore. And that's exactly what needs to happen in this state, but it needs to happen at the local level, exactly what the Stanford Freedom uh, uh, Petition Project is all about. It's, it's, it's working to convince counties and towns and cities to say, authority, who are you? And, 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 and why are you speaking anymore? Go back to your you know, hobbit shell, you, know, you troll. <laughs> That's what they need to say. That, in fact, yeah. I think we should come up with another uh, ordinance that has language similar to what just came out of my mouth. I think that'd be you know, kind of just as funny as Kate Brown's outdoor mask mandate because right. people on Instagram and Free Oregon on Instagram were saying, we're laughing. They were like, LOL, crying, laughing emojis. I mean, it was all pretty funny. A lot of people thought it's really funny. Now, I think it is pretty funny, but underneath that humor is Australia. And in Australia, you can't go more than five miles from your home and they set up tents in front of neighborhoods to make sure people aren't leaving their house. Their biggest fugitive in that continent right now is a dude that went into an elevator without a mask. And, it, and, and uh, it's insanity. They got a, they got a nationwide man <clears throat> guy that didn't wear a mask outside. And that's exactly where we're headed. It's got nothing to do with COVID. Wake up, nothing to do with COVID. It has everything to do with social control and power. And we give her the power when we obey. When we don't obey, the power is ours. Wake up to that fact. Yeah, well, we are. I think we are. I think a lot of people are waking up to that fact, man. We're seeing, uh, we're seeing proclamations, uh, resolutions, if you will, from a lot of county sheriffs that are saying that are just coming out telling the governor, no, uh, we're not writing tickets for not wearing masks if you're in uh, the city park. Uh, we're seeing uh, counties uh, pass uh, resolutions. Uh, some of them have passed resolutions similar to ours. Uh, all of them are pretty similar. Uh, asserting local control and they're, you know, they're saying, hey, you know, we know best what's what's best for our county. We know what's best for our city because we're here. Uh, we are the people that were elected by the people that are here to do what's best for the people that are here. And uh, this one size fits all uh, mandate a palooza coming out of uh, the governor's office uh, just shouldn't apply except to uh, Portland, which I think is what she considers the state of Oregon. Now, if Portland wants to uh, throw people in the pokey uh, for not wearing a mask uh, while people are running around getting murdered and lighting buildings on fire and breaking windows uh, and generally running amok, then I suppose that's Portland's, uh, you know, Portland's prerogative. Uh, you know, you get, the, you get the government that you vote for. Uh, but the rest of us in Oregon, uh, we don't, you know, we're not, we're not going there. Um, and uh, this, you know, we've, uh, we, we are getting signatures every day. We're getting uh, volunteers every single day. Uh, I know that you, yeah, you've seen a huge uh, influx in volunteers, have you not? Totally. You. And, and we're scrambling too to put people to work and, and it's, and, and, and yeah. that's the thing. And you, I know you are too. Um, and it's, it's just been you know, on, on one hand, in our business, David, it's business is good, you know, when, when, when there's a tyrant in power, you know, trying to say, because right. even though it's laughable, the fact of the matter is, is I'm, I, you know, we've got this class action uh, lawsuit effort that we're putting together on behalf of businesses uh, for right. taking, right? And, and I'm, I'm going back and I'm, I'm talking to like Lindsey Graham from Glamour Salon in Salem, who she said at the very beginning, I'm not closing my business down. Well, Kate Brown made an example out of her, sent the police in to shut her down and take her away. And that's that's the problem is, is you know that it's laughable and it's it's a joke. But the reality is, is little itty bitty tyrants like Kate Brown, little shits that have no ability 
to be a leader in any way, shape or form. They get a little taste of power. And what they do with it is, is they send in the police, they send in the Stasi, they come after you and they come after you and they come after you. And that's what the little itty bitty leaders do like Kate Brown. She's a little itty bitty leader. She can't get anybody to follow her. So it's like trying to pork chop around the ugly kid's neck to get the dog to play with him. She has to <laughs> be found power, right? To be able to, uh, to, to, to exert her little controls and it's it's disgusting, but we got to get her out of there. Yeah, well, yeah, she's weaponized every agency at her disposal, uh, which I believe you know she she can do. I don't I don't know. I mean, it probably should be criminal, and we should probably criminalize it. But she's weaponized she's weaponized every agency at her disposal to do what uh, she can't quite do uh, constitutionally under the Oregon and the U.S. Constitution as governor. Uh, and uh, it's become, you know, it, we've seen it. We've seen it nationwide. It's, uh, you know, the media is involved. Uh, all of the media is complicit. All the digital platforms are complicit. Uh, you know, you can't talk about this so-called pandemic uh, without getting a, you know, a veil over your post or being removed from a platform or uh, having, you know, and it's just, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's become so pervasive that. Though I think most people are looking at it and going, I don't remember anything like this ever happening before. Why is this so different? And why is the government pushing a vaccine on me? Uh, you for, know, a, for, a, for a bug that 98.5% of people survive it, it it's right. a little odd, if not more, right? So it's a little bit odd. It's a little bit odd, you know, and I'm not an anti-vaxxer at all, but I kind of look at that and I go, I don't get it. So, you know, even the Oregon Health Authority, uh, who is uh, run by an insurance agent or former insurance agent, uh, not a doctor, they put out a, uh, I wish I had that uh, graphic, but they put out a graphic that listed, uh, it said, you know, what do you do when you get tested positive? And, it's, you know, so you, you get tested positive and you stay home in quarantine. And then the second section, it says uh, you need to call all the people you've been in contact with. So, you know, they've been exposed to COVID. Okay, that's cool. So the third section, you know, it says, well, if you, if you need some information about it, dial 211. But if you have any symptoms, dial 911 and go to the hospital. How come the Oregon Health Authority is not recommending that you go to a doctor to seek treatment, but the only thing they want you to do is to wait at home, apparently, well, this is what I get from the graphic, wait at home until you're so sick, you need to dial 911. I don't understand that. That doesn't make sense to me. That's not good governance. That's, no, not, what terrible a health, that's not what a health authority should be doing. Uh, there are health authority run by a, uh, an economist. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that makes sense. Now you've got the, you've got an, uh, an incompetent person in, in, in health matters, uh, running the health department. So it makes total sense, but you know what else doesn't make sense to me? What else doesn't make sense to me is that, um, you know, knowing, you know, we've been in this pandemic for, you know, 18, 19 months, whatever it is. Right. Why is it that Cape Brown and the state of Oregon, along with the state of Washington, the state of California and Nevada, the West Coast State Pact, why is it that the West Coast State Pact, knowing that we're, we've got this Delta variant that's in India killing thousands and millions of people, why aren't they preparing for uh, uh, more hospital beds and preparing for a solution for higher people getting sick and needing to get medical attention instead of going up oh, Got to take away your liberty. <laughs> oh, got to take away this. Oh, got to do this. And, and it seems to me that liberty is the thing they're really after, right? They're really after our liberty. They're not after us being healthy. Look, my preacher Paul, just yesterday in our free organ town hall, he took us out like he always does. And it was super powerful. And it's on our Instagram. I had to put that prayer on the Instagram because it was just like, oh, my God, I was in tears, right? Preacher Paul's wife is in the hospital with COVID. She went into the hospital, okay? But once she went into the hospital, she went in as a patient. But when she got to the hospital, she was, a, she was property. She was property of that hospital. They would not let, uh, they did not care what kind of treatments they were interested in. They didn't care about him being there. They kicked him out. He had to bring another purse into the hospital and hide uh, the hydrochloroquine in the purse in a certain spot 
and then they searched the purse before taking it up to her and then he luckily hid it in this little compartment so that they didn't find it then she's incoherent on oxygen and she he, he, he's trying to get her attention on the phone to get her to take it and and he's trying to stop him from putting that other stuff in her which is the the what is the the what's the other one that's not good i, I can't remember but anyway you 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 it's not medical treatment anymore there's doctors i had a nurse today an rn from oregon today Tell me that there was a doctor in her hospital that said, if you're not vaxxed, I'm not treating you. Think about that. It's like saying, it's like saying, uh, if, if, if you're fat and you have a heart attack, I'm not helping you. All right. Yeah. Yep. No difference between those two philosophies. Yeah. This is crazy. And, and if you can stay out of the hospital system, you should You need to go to the feed store and get your ivermectin, go to aflds.com and make sure you get the scripts from america's frontline doctors and just take care of yourself buy a can of oxygen if you have to just in case yeah Don't go to the hospital it's like walking into jail well no i mean the oregon health authority is uh, i would i would say encouraging people to do nothing but go to the hospital i, I think that would be fair to uh to uh, infer from their from their statement on what to do when you get tested positive and at the same time you know hospital beds uh i've been i've been kind of looking at hospital beds uh there's a big discrepancy between what the news is reporting and what the hospitals are reporting to uh hhs mm -hmm. uh which has a hospital capacity reporting system that's updated daily uh, so, I, you know, I kind of give them a little bit of a break uh, in so much as there might be a data uh, lag of a couple, three days, which is no big deal. But what I do notice on there is that has hospital capacity, and I'm just following uh, my little uh, hospital here in Grants Pass, hospital capacity will increase in certain reports. Uh, in other words, there'll be more beds. And, and, you know, obviously we know hospitals don't, you know, they don't get smaller. Uh, they're not moving beds out of the building. When they say beds, uh, what they're saying is uh, they, how, uh, you know, how many staff we have to take, take care of a bed. And so yeah. it's staffing is what the problem. So now nurses and hospital staff are no different than the rest of the population. About 25 or 30% of them are looking at this thing going, nah, I think I'm going to pass on that. No, uh, and so you know what 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 more sure way to decrease uh hospital capacity uh than to shoot your staff in the foot uh and tell them they're going to get fired if they don't get a vaccine totally and that's what's happening and i'm getting reports listen i you know this too david because you you're, you're reading the emails that are coming in for, to restore Oregon now i'm reading the ones that are coming into free Oregon. i am getting a ton of state employees nurses rns doctors uh people that own their own medical practices, they're coming like all day long. How do we stop this? How do we stop this? How do we stop this? And, and they're telling me the reports are that there's no staff. People are quitting. They're not trying to do this anymore. They don't want to get the vaccine. They're stepping back and they can't keep employees. And it's just this mess. But what the government's doing wrong again is that this is all about taking away our liberty. Um, they're, they are they are making zero efforts, zero efforts. And a mask outside is not an effort to slow the spread of COVID-19. It just isn't. It doesn't work. We all know that. It is all optics. And that's what she's looking for is optics and control. And, the, and it's going to do absolutely nothing. Instead, the incompetent state of Oregon, the leaders that are running our state are fully incompetent of doing their job. And they're not doing anything to to maintain uh, uh, capacity at our hospitals. Nothing. They're just taking away our liberty. And mm -hmm. liberty and health are two separate things. They do not go together. There should never be a liberty consequence where you lose your freedom uh, and your rights because of a pandemic. I don't care how bad it was. I don't care if 50% of the people that got COVID-19 died. There is no connection between civil no. rights and a, and, a, and, a, and a natural or even a man-made disaster. Is that clear? Yeah. 
that has to be so clear in everybody's mind that our civil rights do not end under any circumstances. Yeah, yeah, you don't. The Constitution is not void, uh, and your natural rights that are protected by the Constitution, not given by the Constitution, but protected by the Constitution, are not voided during any kind of emergency. You know, the fact is, is this really isn't a question of whether to vax or whether to not vax. It's not a question of whether to mask or not mask. Uh, it's, you know, the foundational issue here is uh, the retention of everyone's individual choice to make their own health decisions, to make the decisions that are best for them. And I just got some breaking news in here. Uh, this is from my oldest daughter, who is a nurse. She said nursing licenses are not being processed with a stated time, and applicants are told not to call the nursing board in the state of Oregon. What? Yeah. Yeah. They're not processing nurse applications? That's correct. Well, they might be, but they won't tell us. They won't, well, uh, they, they said they're not being processed with a stated time. In other words, they won't tell you when they can be, when, uh, you know, you can get your license processed. Okay, so what, you, what, what we're talking about here is, is now that's absolutely proven that they're not, they're doing the opposite. They're not trying to increase capacity. And they are not trying to increase capacity. Sick. They're trying to take away our liberty. So if they can reduce the, the capacity, just like last year with the whole bed, the whole uh, bed gate, you know, with Kate Brown and the hospital bed gate where they were removing beds. Th th this is this is a, an attack on our liberty. I, if I am if there's a 2021 Paul Revere moment, it is happening now mm -hmm. Th they are coming. They are coming for us. And we have to wake up and we have to stand up and we have to fight back in every means necessary. And the first means are they have to be legal. We have to use the legal process. But I'm telling you right now, they're, they're not stopping here. They're not stopping here. This well, it begs the question, Ben. Uh, so if, uh, if and they are, if, uh, you know, the state executive branch, the governor's office uh, is... Uh, shooting themselves in the foot by reducing staffing, by not allowing non-vaccinated uh, staff to work, by terminating them, if they're not processing uh, nursing licenses, uh, which should be doing, uh, they should be running 24-7 uh, on that, uh, whatever overtime. So if they're doing that and they are doing that, and if the hospitals fill up and they will because staff will decrease and no one is allowed to go to the hospital, this is a, uh, you know, this is a situation that has been created by government. Government is famous for creating situations and then bringing a solution. So tell me, what is going to be the solution to this particular problem that government has created? Scary thought. I don't know. Lockdowns, let the unvaccinated die. Um, I don't know. The, 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 but, but that's I mean, like, we, we it's, have the it's the what's the next step question. I mean, what, what happens after that? What happens? It's up to us. Yeah. It's well, well it is up to us. It's up to the people what happens next. Yeah. You know, we, last night we had people on from, that were involved in the, in the freedom rally in Portland over the weekend where Ted Wheeler said, well, Choose love. We're just not going to intervene. And it was skirmishing through the streets of Portland, right? And, right. and you know, I think probably everybody that's watching this right now has probably seen the videos of the, the IEDs being thrown, the cars being driven into the Patriot rally, um, and, and then and the response that occurred. Um, and and we're, we're literally living in a situation where the government has successfully pitted ourselves against each other. They've divided and weakened us. They've they've smoke and mirrors and corruption through smoke and mirrors and corruption. They've they've manufactured a, a, a crisis where, you know, there's a thousand people in the hospital. Well, Business Insider, which is a national publication and a far left one at that, just earlier last week did a report that 60 percent of Oregon's hospital beds are being used by non COVID patients. Right. So so there, there's yeah. and then meanwhile, we're not going to process any more nursing board applications, meaning meaning that people who are ready to become RNs are, are not going to be able to become an RN because the state isn't going to process them. <coughs> they're ready. They got, well, their, they got their they got their um, uh, their their clinicals done and they're ready to get their their license and they're not. Yeah. Gonna that's insane. Yeah, I mean, wouldn't you be wouldn't you be working overtime to do that? Now, listen, this is from the uh, HHS Health and Human Services Data Hub. 
this is my little hospital, right? Uh, you can you can see it right there. Okay, this was from yesterday. Uh, Seventy-seven percent of ICU beds uh, in sixty-four hospitals reporting. Oh, this is actually Hubbard, or not Hubbard, but Oregon. This is Oregon total. Seventy-seven percent of ICU beds in sixty-four hospitals reporting are are full. Twenty-six point four four percent of ICU beds in use are for COVID. Twenty-six percent. That's saying twenty-six percent. Twenty-six percent. These are the numbers. You, you can't even trust. Reported. You can't even trust uh, uh, Business Insider. They're such. They're just. They're just liars. Sixty-four. That's saying twenty-four percent. Twenty-six. Right. Data. Yep. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, I. You know, I through this whole thing. You know, I've just been my. Uh, well, like you said, and like I just said. Uh, you know, through this whole thing, my uh, my stance has been, my position has been uh, that it doesn't matter. Uh, what the emergency is that, uh, you know, the Constitution is not voided, whether it be the Oregon or the U.S. Constitution. Uh, and that seems to be the only response that this particular governor and state government has. And we know, you know, from other governors in other states that you can have a different response. You can be Christy Noem in, 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 in North Dakota, or South Dakota yeah. and say, I trust it's it's not even up to me to trust or not trust people. Uh, it's up to me to stay out of the way of people's personal medical decisions. Uh, and I think that's what we want here in Oregon is we want a government uh, that is out of our business, uh, that leaves us alone, that leaves us to make our own choices. And does uh, whatever the, the job that we yeah. hire them to do and does it effectively on our behalf. Right now, yeah. the state of Oregon is doing the job, not that we're paying them to do, but they're doing the job of coming after us. And, and, and making sure that when one of us goes to the hospital, we're now government property, making sure that our kids go to school and they become government property, making sure that they take away our businesses and our private property and our rights all along. They're coming after us. Our government is coming after us in Oregon. They're doing it in Washington. They're doing it in California, except the Californians have that recall. And I mean, we're talking like two weeks uh, and maybe Larry Elder is going to be the next governor of California. Man, I think that is something. And I think that that's that's going to be something. That's going to be something because it's going to break up the West Coast state pact. It will. It'll break up the West Coast mafia, uh, and it'll infect, uh, if you will, and that's I'm sure that's the way the liberals would say it. Uh, Democrats would say it. It will infect uh, the rest of the West Coast. So, hey, uh, <laughs> thanks, Ben. I'm infected. Uh, yeah, we need to infect. Well, we need. Well, yeah, we need to infect the entire West West Coast with liberty and freedom. Yep. Uh, you know, I mean, that's, I mean, that's, it's born in every, you know, it's held in deeply in everyone's soul. Uh, you know, we all yearn We're to be, Americans. we are, we free. are, <laughs> we are, they're going to be able to take that away from us this quick, just in like 18 months, they're going to boil our, boil us like frogs. I, I think so. I think that's they, what they think. They that's they what they think. think. Yeah. They think that. I yeah. I think so. So, you know, join us, uh, freeoregon.us, freeoregon.us. You can find Free Oregon uh, everywhere, Instagram, Facebook, uh, on all the platforms. I'm sure you can find us, Stop the Abuse, uh, Restore Oregon Now, Facebook. You can find us on the web, restoreoregonnow.org, restoreoregonnow.org. Join up with us. Uh, you, will find out, you will find that you are not alone uh, everywhere you go. Uh, we'll be going there with you. We'll be going to county commission meetings. We'll be going to school board meetings and we'll be going to city council meetings and we will be applying constant pressure and we will be doing that pressure, applying that pressure constantly. Uh, there is nothing more important right now in this moment, not your job, not your income, not your bills you got to pay. You have to take some kind of action to support this fight, to push it back. You have to do something. If you can write a check, if you can put a uh, 10 bucks or sign up for a monthly subscription to support either one of our organizations, you do that. If you have four hours a week, two hours a week, 30 minutes a week, there is something you can do. If we all did that, if we all did what we could, we will push this overbearing government back to where it came from, the depths of hell. So you got to join us. FreeOregon.us, RestoreOregonNow.org, right? Is that, is that right? Yep. And don't forget, you got to sign it. And send it. Send it. You got to sign it and send it. That means you Thanks. go online, you sign it, and you email the link to everyone you know. Sign it and send it. Stand right. Thanks, everyone. We'll talk to you soon. Stay up.